Hafideh Todesamzu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on the Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all media main broadcasting outlets with the first notice being distributed on Tuesday, May 26, 2020, and the second notice distributed on Sunday, May 31st, 2020. The virtual public hearing notice is also posted on the legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, and the time we uh, got a bit of a late start, the time is 545. This virtual confirmation hearing is now called to order. Siduas Maasi for your virtual attendance to this afternoon's hearing. On the agenda for this afternoon or early evenings a virtual confirmation hearing are the appointment of Joseph D. Certeza to serve as a member of the Board of Directors, Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities, the appointment of Gillette Leon Guerrero to serve as the director of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities, and third, the appointment of Monica Geiger to serve as the youth member on the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission. The committee will receive oral testimony for E. Magahaga's nominees and will continue to accept written testimony from the general public, which will be made part of today's public hearing record. So uh, right now, we are fortunate to have the minority leader, uh, Senator Tello Taidegui, Sidus Maasi for your attendance. And there may be a couple of other senators that will be joining us uh, once they get logged in. So uh, next we'll go to introducing, uh, we have Mr. Joseph D. Certeza, the CAHA board nominee who is here. We do have uh, Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, the CAHA acting director who is the nominee to be full director, Monica Geiger, the DPR commission nominee. Then we also have the Department of uh, Parks and Recreation, the acting director, Mr. John Birch, who is here. And we also have two of my committee staff members. We have uh, Mr. Roland Villaverde and Mr. Victor Luhan. So thank you so much, uh, all of you for joining me. Now, before we receive and hear oral testimonies from each nominee listed on our virtual public hearing agenda, I'd first like to provide some general rules of conduct for all those who are participating and in attendance. The conduct of this hearing shall be as follows. All participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting, specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. Please ensure, excuse me, ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone when it is your time to speak. The chair will invite a nominee in the order listed on the agenda and then recognize individuals who have signed up to testify for the nominee. Individuals providing oral testimony shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and shall state their name and title for record keeping purposes. The order of questioning will begin with the panel of senators who, uh, hey, it may just be me and the minority leader and we'll just go back and forth and take turns that way. <laughs> um, who shall complete their line of questioning for each nominee. Each panel member will be allowed to pose one question to the nominee and then be provided another round to ask questions uh, should that be necessary for the nominee or the testifying panel. Oral testimonies received shall be confined to the substance or the character of the nominee. 
Discussion of motives of any senator or individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this rule of conduct will result in removal from the virtual meeting room by the host. I ask that all participants keep their comments or testimony to within five minutes. So with that being done, half a day, the work of a board or a commission member involves much volunteer time and commitment and provides an important link between the public and agency, the legislature and the governor. Each board is unique in its purpose, mission and role. It is especially important that members must be familiar with their board's governing statutes or other authorizing directives so that they understand the framework within which the board and the entity, the agency or such itself must operate. With that being said, I'd like to call upon Joseph D. Certeza to provide his testimony to serve as a member of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities, AKA CAHA, and then receive testimony from individuals who are confirmed to participate in his nomination. I'd first like to acknowledge before we start with uh, Mr. Certeza, the acting director of CAHA, Gillette Leon Guerrero, who is participating in this virtual hearing and to find out if she will be providing oral testimony um, after Mr. Certeza is done. So um, acting director, if you could unmute yourself and then let us know if, if you'll be providing oral testimony. Okay, uh, yes, I will be. Okay, great. So we will listen to the testimony of Mr. Certeza first and then I will call upon you next, very good. So I'd like to call upon Joseph D. Certeza to provide his testimony to serve as a member on the Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities Commission Board of Directors. And then to receive the testimony as I've explained from others who are participating in this virtual public hearing. So Mr. Certeza, if uh, you would go ahead and unmute yourself and begin your testimony. Uh, for allowing me to be a part of this space and this uh, process. Um, I seek your confirmation in continuing uh, my role as a board member at the Council on Arts and Humanities. Um, with, uh, for me to continue, um, I really foresee a lot of great improvements that we've been needing at the Council of Arts and Humanities. For one great example, within this past month, um, during our public hearings around the Festival of Pacific Arts budgets, um, it was one of the testimonies where um, one uh, Ken Leon Guerrero asked about um, promoting the arts here on island. And um, with that response by Ken Leon Guerrero, one of uh, our newest missions was to promote the arts in our community through a project that we are supposed to uh, produced prior to um, the lockdown, which was called Arts in Agatnia, which is all about celebrating our artisans and the arts at the cap uh, are at our island's capital. Um, and I want to foresee that happen. And I think there's great potential in giving more opportunities to our artisans, but not only that, giving more opportunities for community to appreciate the arts. So that's one definitive thing that I look forward to um, pursuing if I can be um, confirmed again at the Council of Arts and Humanities. Um, other great things to look forward to, um, if I can continue, is that we are really close to finalizing the amendments for the percent of the arts. And I feel we can do that within, uh, before the end of this year, if, um, if I am to confirm. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big time artist. And I'm really passionate about the arts and our artist community. And I feel that uh, my relationship with the arts community on the island is, is growing. And um, I know that because I'm involved, I'm engaging. I'm always talking to the artists. I'm always asking them what's needed. What's, what's, what challenges do we face that we can improve on? And I get that with, between all generations, whether they're aspiring artisans coming out of high school, or um, uh, uh, emerging artisans who are 
coming out of college to establish artisans who are of the older generation, which I am able to communicate and develop positive dialogue, which is needed at Kaha. So I seek your confirmation um, in continuing the work I, I really want to do for the Council of Arts and Humanities. And I feel with the board currently, we can do so. I feel that with uh, Gillette Leongaro, who we, I hope to become a director of the Council of Arts and Humanities, we can prove to the community all of the challenges we were faced this past year, which is where are we at in our community? And I feel um, we can make our community believe in the Council of, of the Arts and Humanities. So I seek your confirmation, Suzu Smasi. Suzu Smasi for <laughs> that uh, very good testimony. And we do have other written testimony, which I'll read uh, perhaps some excerpts of for those that haven't been here. I would like to also recognize that uh, Senator Joe San Augustine has made it into the, um, the hearing room. So he will be here and he will be part of the round of questions um, as we get to that stage. So uh, Sijus Masi, Senator for making it in. So with that, um, I'd like to have the acting director of CAHA, Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, to submit her oral testimony on behalf of uh, Mr. Suteza. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I am Gillette Leon Guerrero, Acting Director of CAHA. And I'd like to say I have known uh, Mr. Joseph Suteza only a short time, but in that time, he's proven to be a valuable asset to CAHA. His enthusiasm and motivation are infectious. His willingness to assist the staff and contribute time and effort is laudable. I note from his resume that he has been involved with the council since 2016. In 2018, he took on the leadership position serving as vice chair, a position he holds today. He has demonstrated his commitment through effort and talent. And although I've only been here a short time, we've worked together already, uh, along with Jackie Balbus and board member Judy Flores to create the 2020 Guam Artist Survey. While I'm sure we could have done it without his assistance, his participation greatly facilitated the effort. As an artist, he was consulted as to the relevancy of the survey questions, and his technical skill allowed us to put it into an appropriate format to upload to our website, Facebook, and Instagram. His commitment to the organization and to community service is truly inspiring. The staff of CAHA have nothing but nice things to say about him, as do I. So I wholeheartedly and without reservation support the reappointment of Mr. Joseph Certeza to the CAHA Board of Directors. Thank you. Suju Smalasi for that glowing testimony uh, that speaks very well in, uh, the, in uh, towards uh, Mr. Certeza's uh, and on his behalf. So I also would like to read um, a few of the testimony, but just excerpts of it. Um, we did receive, uh, I believe, three other, either two or three other pieces of testimony. One is from Dr. Judy Flores. And uh, again, these are glowing letters of recommendation. So uh, for Dr. Flores, who has um, been connected with Kaha for a very long time and is a lifelong artist herself. She said that she has been impressed by his vision, his leadership abilities, his enthusiasm and hard work. So all four of those are excellent qualities. She says that his artistic talent and leadership is vital to the continued success of Kaha and points out that throughout his, this pandemic, Joseph has continued to inspire and encourage us to engage in innovative activities that will support and engage our artists. As we face new challenges in adjusting to life after our isolation period, we need people with his leadership to steer our art, artists and art organizations in new and exciting ways. I look forward to Joseph Certeza's continued service on our CAHA Board of Directors. And then she ends with saying with an exclamation point that he inspires me. We also have testimony from Jackie Balbus. Uh, Ms. 
Balbus has been with Kaha for, I believe, uh, just shy of or more than 30 years. So it's right around there, a very long time. And she was acting director uh, for quite a while as well. So some of what she points out, and this, this helps us understand the breadth of what Mr. Certeza has to offer, is that he is an artist, a teacher, and an entrepreneur. So when his term expired, he was the board vice chairman. And after this, um, I'll ask him if there's an interruption or uh, when he's renominated, if he understands, he just, if he maintains that chairmanship. And she points out that she has worked closely with him on many Kaha projects and programs. And the most recent being, as he was mentioning, the arts in Haganya program. She labels it as his brainchild. And uh, we do look forward to that coming to fruition. The more arts that we have in Hagatnya, the main sort of hub, in a way, the capital of the island, but uh, throughout the island, um, it brings excitement and so many good things when we do have programs and activities like that. She also considers him a vital contributor to board deliberations, bringing in an artist and an entrepreneur's perspective to all discussions and based on his expertise, community involvement and solid track record as a, a former board member, I fully support the consideration and reconfirmation of Joseph Certeza to the board of directors of the Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities. So again, a, a, a very solid recommendation. And just before I open it up to the panel, I wanted to read, and perhaps it is a, a standard template, letter, but I think in this case, uh, knowing Mr. Certeza and myself, hearing the other testimony, I think it's very appropriate. So in his reconfirmation nomination letter, it says, your reappointment is a testimony to your commitment to service and the understanding of the great responsibility that this position requires. And I know that you will continue to fulfill your duties in a professional manner for others to follow. And uh, it goes on oh, just a little bit further. They state that uh, the Lieutenant Governor says, I am confident that your time on the board will be effective and productive. And from working with you this last year and a half, I know that the board has indeed been very productive and that you've been a major part of that. Uh, you've rolled up your sleeves and you've worked with myself and, and my office uh, for projects related to Kaha. So I've, I've seen that firsthand. So what I will do is I will go ahead and open up the hearing to the panel. I'll start first with the committee member, uh, Senator Joe San Agustin, and then we'll move to the minority leader who is also in attendance. Uh, Senator Joe. Uh, th thank you, um, uh, Madam Chair. Um, this is Senator uh, Kelly. Uh, Joe, Joe um, I like the first number one, uh, thank you for accepting the nomination. That's one. Number two, um, looking at your background, uh, great, it took you 10 years to get your degree. I like that because it took me 15 to get mine. So you're okay, you're on track. You're focused, you have a goal, and that's what we want to see is that, you know, sometimes some people will say that, what did it take you so long? You had, you had to take care of life, and now you're taking care of the people of Guam uh, in, in Ka. And you did that for four years. I'm looking at, at your, your background here and um, you're uh, the lead creative from Tao. You're also a art teacher or a former art teacher from St. Francis uh, and then also from the Academy of Lake. And, and you know, it only says good things. And, and what I've, I've heard so far, they're great things. Um, I'm confident and, I, and I'm in support of, you, of your nomination and I will vote yes for you, all right? So you just take care and just uh, take care of the arts. Focus, you know what the goal is, that's promoted. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just Masi, uh, Senator Joseph Agustine, and Minority Leader Kelo Taiwi. Just Masi, Madam uh, Chair. Um, half a day, Joey. Uh, of course, I, I wouldn't miss this for the world. I've known you for quite some time, and um, I'm just 
so very proud. I think the one thing that uh, the acting director said was in the word infectious. That's a perfect word to describe you. When I'm around you, it's just, it, it makes me feel bubbly. It makes me feel like I need to get up and do something. And that's what you do when you're around people. They just wanna, you know, go and, and do something to be a part of, of your vision. And I know that you, you bring a wealth of, of talent, most especially uh, to Kaha, but um, as well, um, your ideas. Your ideas, and one thing when I've, I've spoken to you before is, is common sense, and you know sometimes common sense is most uncommon. So thank God you have common sense. On top of that, <laughs> so um, so Joey, um, what exactly is as a board member at Kaha um, is your responsibility? Um, thank you for asking me those questions. I'm, I'm really grateful for all everyone's kind words at this point. Um, some of the, the roles as a Kaha board member is that we are to support our artisans foremost, and we are a voice for the arts in any aspect that we see it or hear it or feel it on this island. We have a responsibility to uphold that and to make sure that the arts is perpetuated and respected in a high value way. Um, we as board members are supportive of our, of our organization when it comes to any fundraising efforts. We play a role. Mm -hmm. uh, we support our, um, our staff when it comes to the grant funding. We uphold this leadership to guide artists and direct artists on the best pathway to fulfill their projects with our NEA grants. We oversee the 1% of the arts and our responsibility as a board member is to fulfill and make sure that program is alive and flourishing and supporting our, our artists and our island community. Um, we, another role as a board member is that um, we have to be an example for other artisans and we have to uh, protect our artisans. So, that's and that comes with being vocal and not being mamalao to say something when it's important and mm -hmm. you know we uphold the spirit of the island and that's an, another art form um well, yeah. how about administratively joey administratively um in so administration yeah administratively what what does 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 do you uh, direct the um the director to do certain things or approve certain things are budgets approved within the board oh yes actually with the upcoming budgets so uh senator joseph augustine uh i'm going to be supporting uh our acting director <laughs> soon to be director and making sure that our budget is as transparent and as as strong to what we feel is right for the arts and how we feel it will be uh will utilize that money properly and responsibly uh, mm -hmm. We know that um, we had the issue with FESPAC, and that was something I jumped on um, right off the back and said, you know, if the board is responsible for this, then we have to be a part of every decision making and every process of that funds. And we have to be there present. Otherwise, um, a lot of information might go under the under the table, which which is why um, that was my responsibility that I felt I had to take initiative on. Um, Very good, yeah. But in administration wise, we are supportive of our staff and, and our director in guiding strategies of how do we execute projects or how do we solve issues. We administrate strategize together as, a, as an organization. Um, mm -hmm. And if someone's struggling administratively, we are there to support them, but also mm -hmm. to help understand what the issues are so that, you know, we are effective and we're doing the right job within the, the, uh, the confinements of what is the law here on island as well. Okay. Well, Joey, uh, you know, it's exactly what we wanted to hear from you. Um, and I want to thank you so much for all these years of contributing to Kaha and putting your blood, your sweat and tears, and definitely your amazing, amazing talent, which is so infectious. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> but um, Thank you so much for staying on and, and uh, keeping a watchful eye on our artists on Guam. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And of course, my full support. Thank you. Susan Masi.
to do is Masi, a um, minority leader. So uh, we're, we're a small but a cozy group. So uh, some, of the, some of the best kinds of group. Uh, Joey, if I could ask you, with your uh, going back on to, well, we're looking right now at a reconfirming you. So is it your understanding that um, if you get reconfirmed, you would maintain your vice chairmanship or um, would they go through the process of maybe just reconfirming you? Could you explain that? Yeah, actually, um, if, if I am to be confirmed to be a part of the board of directors for the Council of Arts and Humanities, um, I think it's protocol that I do go under the process of being reelected as a vice chair. That's protocol in my book. Whether it's by yeah. the Guam law or not, I think that's protocol. And you know, it has to be, I have to uh, obtain that sense of worth to be the vice chair anyways. I have to uphold that every day. So that would be my, the, my understanding is yes, I would have to go through that process. Um, but other than that, another thing about being a board is that um, I am an entrepreneur. I do own a business. And out of respect to the grants that we do offer the Council on Arts and Humanities, I do accept to refrain myself from any any grants and any grants that comes for the percent of the arts. I know that's the responsibility I have to uphold. So I accept that as well. So you're saying that you recuse yourself um, if there is a perceived potential for conflict of interest? Yes, and that is by law okay. as well. So I accept that. Very good. And I think both of those things speak very highly of the high, you know, the high level of standards that you have, that you do. You've spoken about wanting the Kaha and the activities, the programs to be very transparent. And I know I worked with you. Uh, you really did come in for uh, every meeting that you could, and you were um, just leading the charge in many ways to make sure that Best Pack was fundraising and getting business partners and as much community partnership as it could so that it was really uh, something that was supported by the community and it was one of those by the community for the community um, and that was all wrapped up together. So I appreciate your vision for that, but not only the vision that as I said, you came in and uh, you sat through those meetings and you made sure to, to make the time to do that. So with that, um, I do wanna say, as I mentioned before, that I know that you've been a very active board member and the board has taken their role very seriously. They've really worked to improve the program where they could. Um, and, and I know more of that will continue. Um, and part of what you, offer is, as has been mentioned, you're an artist, which I think is so important. I don't know that that was always, that that people who were part of the board were always, uh, um, that they had that much strength in, in being an artist, but, but now we have uh, several artists. We have chanter, performing arts, visual arts, and, and so forth. And I think that makes a, a real difference. You have those that are part of the system and then a mixture of those who are maybe not artists to, to bring out all those perspectives, but you have been a teacher, you're, uh, as a, a term could be used, an art entrepreneur, art entrepreneur, <laughs> stick it all together, uh, because you've, you've made a, a business out of this as well. So given the work that you've been doing and uh, some of what you've put into action, what are your further visions, would you say, what you're hoping to, move forward with in the next um, couple of years if you've been thinking that far ahead oh yeah totally I have been I've been like having so many grand plans for the for the arts on the island like the biggest things I would love to see is that cultural exchange between our island's artisans and artisans around the world we need to expose our artisans and give our artisans those opportunities whether it be here on Guam or off island that's and that's one of the biggest things I look forward to. And the other huge thing I'm really looking forward to is really making genuine, critical, and effective exhibitions that inspires our community to foresee the future and to think of more solutions. And you know, we already had that example that was supposed to happen at Arts and Agatnya. Doesn't mean it's not going away, but it allows us to improve on it. So be looking forward to children's exhibitions here on this island, be looking forward to more performances by our local artisans being promoted genuinely 
and be ready to see the arts at the face of every single media outlet. Because working with Gillette and projecting what we want to see, I hope the island's ready. And that's, and that's my feeling towards it. So that's of what- Of course, <laughs> Very good. Yes, and building on what you were saying, you know, uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, arts and the humanities, they can, they can help solve issues. They are beautiful, they are aesthetic, they give a sense of, of purpose and, and depth and belonging and all of those sort of things, but they can also be part of helping lift the community up, helping solve sort of issues. Yeah. Um, some of what I was talking to somebody about earlier today was, you know, perhaps inspiring the people painting murals to encourage people to, uh, to stop littering. And, yeah. and uh, you know, because there can be those social messages. And to me, that's some of the most powerful art out there that mm -hmm. speaks to people on a different level in a way that a PSA or hearing from a professional or a certified somebody yeah. doesn't. But since art gets to that deeper place of oneself uh, and speaks a different kind of language in a way that um, it can be part of that messaging for lifting up our community and improving our community. Yeah, and you know, the arts is, is really essential during this, this time when our people need healing. And uh, just throwing it out there, when it comes to the budgets, I think like the arts should not be discredited at this point, especially in the time of the community's need. I think we will probably be the, the strongest component that our government needs to depend on to get us back to a better sense of normalcy um, during this time. Of, so the arts is really powerful. So we got to allow that to be recognized. Thank yes, you. I, I definitely agree. And um just kind of uh, rounding things up. I just want to point out uh, again, building on some of what you were saying, um, I've known you for many years and I know that you're a critical thinker, that you are constantly thinking about how to improve, how to build on and how to invigorate. So um, all of these I think speak very well of what you have been doing and uh, we hope that you continue to do at Kaha. Were there any other questions or comments from the panel before I close this nomination hearing out? Everybody seems good. Okay. So with that, um, we've completed the last round of questions uh, from the committee and the panel. So this concludes the confirmation hearing for Joseph D. Certeza to serve as a member on the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors. The time for this is uh, 6.18 and we will close that and then we will move into our next confirmation hearing. So the next confirmation hearing and uh, this will be a nice situation where I believe Mr. Sorteza is going to give oral testimony for the acting director as well. <laughs> so. Uh, um, we will be hearing from uh, Mr. Suteza again. So let me begin the confirmation hearing of Gillette Leon Guerrero, E. Magahagan Guahan's nominee to fill the position of director to the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities. We will first hear from Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, then receive testimony from the others who have confirmed their participation for her confirmation hearing. After Ms. Uh, Gillette Leon Guerrero is done, uh, as I mentioned, we'll be calling on Mr. Joseph Certeza. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and call Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero to go ahead, start with your name for the public record, uh, your current position, and then you can provide your oral testimony. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Gillette Leon Guerrero. I'm the acting director of CAHA. And I must say I'm honored to be here today and excited at the prospects of working with you and your committee, the talented staff and board of CAHA and the Guam community of artists to promote the arts and humanities on Guam. A little bit about myself. My past experience includes being the executive director of several nonprofit organizations, including the American Red Cross during Typhoon Paca 
the Consortium for Pacific Arts and Cultures in Honolulu, and the Guam Humanities Council. Of these, the most relevant to Kaha is the Guam Humanities Council. I served as executive director between 1993 and 1996, and again from 1999 to 2004. I was responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, which included overseeing a federal grant program, supervising personnel, federal reporting to the National Endowment for the Humanities, overseeing production of mat marketing material, carrying out fundraising activities, grant writing, and organizing council projects. Duties also include, included maintaining cooperative relationships with local, regional, and national arts and humanities organizations. I was the second executive director of the council. When, when I started, it was only the grant program. I expanded the programming to include a resource center, several projects and fundraising activities. I stepped down in 1996 when we moved off island temporarily. But in 1999, I was asked to come back to rebuild the council because it had lost its federal funding due to criminal activity. I started again with only a computer in my home office. I was able to restore fiscal credibility and within a month, the council received a clean bill of health from federal funding agencies and independent auditors. Annual audits revealed no findings under my leadership. The council in income increased from a negative balance to an annual budget of over half a million dollars during my tenure. The council was able to restore community programming and establish five anchor programs. Of these, I am most proud of the Mother Read, Father Read, Father Read Lit Family Literacy Program and Guampedia, the online encyclopedia, both which continue to operate today. I have also served as a member of several boards of directors, including being a charter member of the Guam Humanities Council, a charter member of Guampedia, the vice chair of the University of Guam Board of Regents and chair of the Academic Promotion and Tenure Committee. I've been a member of the Research Corporation at the University of Guam, president and historian of the Guam Women's Club and registrar of the Marianas Island chapter of NSDAR. My experiences with these organizations have, provided, have prepared me for this position. My knowledge of nonprofit management and programming, administration of federal grants related to the arts and humanities, my familiarity with the arts and humanities community and my work on various boards of directors inform my decisions as I move forward. And I won't bore you with further details of my qualifications since you have my resume. But what I do want to tell you is that I bring a lifelong passion for the arts and humanities that is evidenced by the work that I have accomplished. My motivation comes from a genuine love and belief that society is enhanced by the arts and humanities. While some see the arts as either decoration or recreation, the truth is the arts not only enhance our lives, but give us opportunities to connect with others, elevate us, they allow us to express ourselves and leave a lasting legacy of our culture. After all, when you think about societies that have long gone, it is through their art, music, dance, architecture, sculpture, literature, language that we learn about them. Sometimes their art is all that remains. The arts and humanities are the vehicle through which we express all those things that make us human. They influence society by changing opinions, instilling values, and translating experiences across time and space. Research has so shown that art affects the fundamental sense of self. Painting, sculpture, music, dance, literature, and other forms are often thought of as the repository of a society's collective memory. They give meaning and they affect our emotions. Think about, think about the last time you win, witnessed a beautiful dance, watched an inspiring film, listened to beautiful music, or created something yourself. Remember the emotion. I remember how I felt when I witnessed various presentations at the Guam Festival of Pacific Arts. I remember some presentations made me feel very proud and happy, while others elicited sadness. I was moved to tears sometimes and inspired at others. It was fantastic. Because of this ability to affect our emotions and well being, art and the humanities are often used by therapists, counselors, teachers, social workers, and others to work with children, at risk youth, prisoners, the elderly, immigrants, and those who need help with connecting to others, all who need help with self expression, self confidence, anger, and a number of other issues. 
And I hope you please bear with me while I read an excerpt from an article entitled Art in the Time of Crisis by Lewis Netter, a senior lecturer in illustration at the University of Port Portsmouth, who talks about our current situation. I, I think it's uh, important. And he says, quote, people have died, critical resources are stretched, the very essence of our freedom is shrinking, and yet we are moved inward to the vast inner space of our thoughts and imagination, a place we have neglected. Of all the necessities we now feel so keenly aware of, the arts and their contribution to our well being is evident and in some ways central to coronavirus confinement for those locked in a home. For some, there are more pressing needs, but momentary joys, even in dire circumstances, often come through the arts and collective expression. So now I'm gonna get into the other stuff. <laughs> what is my vision for Kaha? When I was offered this opportunity, I thought deeply about what it was that I would like to accomplish. While I envisioned, what I envisioned was an organization that really represented the best of the arts and humanities in Guam. An organization that was a leader, collaborator, promoter, and facilitator of arts and humanities program. An organization that brings together all of the stakeholders of the arts and humanities individuals, informal groups, businesses, and organizations. When someone wants to know about the arts and humanities in Guam, I want Kapa the place they turn to. So what does this mean in practical terms? Well, I believe in building a strong foundation. The first step then is assessing and evaluating the organization and its operations. Board and staff are instrumental in achieving this through strategic planning which will not only result in the collective vision of stakeholders, but identify resources needed to accomplish the goals set. And we've started this. The staff will be completing their work plans as they relate to the strategic plan. And the next step is to hold planning sessions with the board and other stakeholders to flesh out the plan so that it will be ready for our three-year grant application to NEA, which is actually due the end of September. And in tandem with this, we have created a survey of Guam artists that includes questions regarding their internet capabilities, their practice, and their suggestions for programs and assistance from Kaha. This will inform us of areas that we need to focus on that will be most re relevant to the community. And we are currently revising our grant program to include special calls for proposals, something that I was told has never been done. We are currently finalizing three grant lines for the upcoming grant cycle. Uh, in addition to the CARES Act funding for organizations. And if I can just tell you a little bit about them. The first one is called Arts and Humanities in the Time of Crisis. Literature and arts have always held a prominent place in helping to define who we are as human beings and enriching our lives. This is all more apparent during moments of crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic. CAHA is soliciting projects from individuals and groups that considers the role and value of their particular practice during times of crisis. Also accepted will be projects that provide interpretation and speak to the importance of the role and value the arts and humanities contribute to society during challenging times. And the second uh, grant line would be called uh, Keeping Your Distance. Exhibitions, showcases, concerts, recitals, book readings, and poetry slams all require an audience. How do artists present their work to the community while keeping a safe distance? Kaha is soliciting projects from individuals and groups who will utilize technology such as internet streaming, podcasts, broadcast mediums, and other vehicles to bring their product of the, the product of their particular practice to the community while keeping their distance. Artists will be encouraged to find creative solutions to this situation, which I think will be really exciting. And the last one is sustainability. With research, resources stretched to the limit, how can artists make their practice more sustainable? Kaha is soliciting projects that make, you, make use of recycled, reused material and or natural resources found in Guam. This grant line is also open to projects that use or discuss the theme of sustainability in their art form. And then uh, uh, we have received um, um, CARES uh, Act emergency funding and uh, uh, this is going to be available to uh, organizations. Um, NEA has awarded CAHA $164,400 in emergency funding. $114,400 is available to organizations for personnel and operational costs through a special grant. We are working on developing this grant line and are seeking grant management software paid with NEH funds in order to facilitate this process. Not only will this save paper and make the grant 
pro uh, grant making process more efficient. It will also uh, uh, do away with several menial tasks that the small staff currently have to undertake when processing applications. In addition to this, we are updating our operations in line with sustainability and in light of our current reality. We are investigating ways to connect, display, and interact with our public through technology. We're going to update the Kaha website to make it more useful and interactive. Plans are to include online exhibit space for artists, an artist blog, a podcast section, an updated artist uh, directory, and many other resources for the artists and the public. We're, we're, we're going to establish, we would like to establish a Kaha podcast and or YouTube channel for artists to upload demonstrations and how-to videos, presentations, and discussions about their practice. And this will also provide them with more exposure that they might not be able to get otherwise. And then we, I'd like to look into the feasibility of crowd uh, sourcing online in order to gain support for projects and raise funds that way. And um, in order to further promote the arts and humanities on Guam, we're also looking at establishing collaborations with broadcast media, such as public television and KPRG to bring weekly Kaha programming to the general public. This will allow us to provide more exposure for local artists. We hope to establish this through a special grant uh, initially, but eventually make it sustainable through advertising and sponsorships. And of course we have many, other ideas that you've, you've heard, uh, Joey, um, we have a really good team. So I, I think that uh, increasing the public's accessibility to, to the arts uh, is going to be uh, something that we're gonna be able to accomplish because we have a cadre of creative minds at our disposal. Okay. One of our long range priorities is to have a permanent home for Kaha. What I envision is a civic center type of place that is not only the administrative home to Kaha, but the center for the arts and cre creativity. Small studios for artists to demonstrate and teach their art and or craft, a performing arts stage that doubles as a conference lecture area and visual arts exhibition space and a cultural display area and shops for the artists to sell their work. I'm a dreamer, but I truly believe that it is possible. <laughs> Um, and we do have more immediate needs. Kaha needs stable office space. I was told by one staff member recently that Kaha has moved locations over 10 times during her tenure. At present, Kaha is without adequate office space. We hope to be able to lease a place of our own in the near future. We're waiting for the process to find out, but uh, we're continuing to have to work at home. Um, and. But in order to accomplish all of the things that I've laid out here, uh, the one thing that we need is stability. Um, and then on Friday, we lost our administrative officer who has been with the council for over 20 years. And we are feverishly trying to get her replaced. Uh, the one I do have a, you know, while I have administrative and programming experience, I do not have fam familiarity with the government processes. So this is proving to be a challenge. But the bottom line is I think that this is all possible. It will take effort, collaboration, vision, and adequate resources. If we have these elements, there is no way that we cannot succeed at elevating the well-being of our artists and our residents. And that is what it's all about. So thank you for your time and I welcome your questions. Suzuo Smasi, uh, Acting Director. Um, I'm quite inspired and I'm <laughs> quite excited about all that you've mentioned. Um, the minority leader does need to dash off to another meeting. So if I could let her make a comment before she goes. Oh, thank you so much, um, you know, Madam Chair. I really appreciate it. I am so sorry. I have to speed off to another one. But uh, like I said to Joey, um, Gillette, I wanted to make sure I was being here. I've known you for years. And um, just listening to your testimony, um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Um, it's almost overwhelming, everything that you mentioned. So I wish you luck. You know you've always had my support. We've known each other for many years, longer than Joey. <laughs> so uh, good luck to you. And uh, fundraising, I know you're the woman to do it, to get your uh, home a stable place, a foundation for Kaha to be for the rest of their time. Um, Monica, 
I am so sorry I can't be here for you, but you had me at Surfer Girl. So I, I'm a former surfer as well, you know, and when I saw that you were a surfer, I'm just like, oh, that's my girl. And I'm sure you're going to do a great, great job. Good luck to you, Monica. And um, thank you again, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. And you all have my support. Thank you again. Sidhu Smasi, a minority leader, for taking the time to come here. I know it's been a long day and you have some more, more to attend to, but thank you for stopping in. So next, uh, we'll hear from Senator Joe uh, Senegastine. Well, thank you, ma ma Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Leon Guerrero, I'm, I look forward to hearing you and seeing uh, your budget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something happened. Hello? Oh, all that waiting, and I think he froze up. But um, we might have uh, maybe Victor to tell him that he's frozen and to maybe try to log out and re-log in. So while he's uh, fixing that, I'll go ahead and go through a few things myself. So with your appointment, um, part of the responsibility, and it seems like you are right on track, is increasing efficiency uh, while carrying out the duties. And um, certainly with all that you've mentioned, really it, it's uh, phenomenal, to, phenomenal to think about all of that uh, restructuring, those work plans, um, and the many visions that you've had where you've already put in, in your very short time, so many things in place. I was also very excited to hear about the survey that you've, you've got because that's the that's such an important way is to hear from those that you're actually serving and to hear from the artists themselves. And part of what mm -hmm. uh, st stuck out to me in going through some of the testimony, which I'll go through, is it reminded me the humanities part of um, the Council of Arts and Humanities. I, I think for a whole lot of us, we've been really appreciative of the arts and maybe it's our public part where we haven't always remembered that the humanities is is part of what it provides and so in the testimony some of that really came out is that's part of your background and so um if if we haven't picked up on it i think that there will be plenty of opportunity for be, us to be picking up on more of that so some of what I know, and I must say that your uh, nomination packet is one of the thickets that I've oh, come across. Uh, there have been many positions, as you've mentioned, that you've had over the years and very successfully. But one of them that I know, because I, I've known you for a while and I've done other projects with you, is your, is your early, early work uh, at the university where you worked with the archaeology lab. Yeah. So... <laughs> You worked with the archaeology lab, and then one of the testimonies that we have is from Joe Kanata. He is the chief program officer for the Guam Preservation Trust, and he pointed out that you have for many years been a, a very large supporter of historic preservation. And I think for a lot of people, they wouldn't necessarily make that connection between having a background in archaeology and, and being a supporter of historic preservation. So I'm not sure if Senator Joe is coming back in, but maybe you could spend a few minutes of connecting those dots for us. I know that jo Joey totally gets it because that I, I see that influence in his art, but could you explain for us how it, it is connected for you and how it feeds into the humanities and arts? Historic preservation? And, and the art? Archaeology. Oh, uh, your brain, I, I didn't get that. Oh, how historic Sorry. preservation and archaeology, how they feed into uh, what, what something like Kaha provides in arts and humanities. Oh, well, archaeology and, and well, it, like I said earlier, um, it's through the arts that we're able to uh, project a lot of things. Uh, for instance, in, in archaeology, archaeology and uh, historic preservation are sort of, you know, over here. I, I guess you could say. But how do we bring that to the public? How do we how do we how do we bring that information to the public? And it's through the arts. The arts um, is the vehicle 
through which we convey many of this information, many of the that type of information, and also um, culture in in itself. I mean, think about uh, fest. I, I keep going back to fest pack, but when when you look at that, you you see uh, remnants of our past, and um, it gives people identity, their uh, sense of identity and connectedness, um, which is very, very important uh, to, to the well-being of people and what brings us all together. Um, so I guess that's what I would say. <laughs> Very good. And we do have Senator Joe Senegastine back in. So Senator Joe, uh, if you'd like to ask a question right. or make a comment. Oh, uh, real, real simple for Ms. Young Girl. You know, I looked at your background. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at the um, uh, at the budget hearing. I, I will support your nomination. There's no doubt about that. I, I like the part there in 2003, you got a certificate for fundraising. So I like that <laughs> part. And I like when you talked about grants because I, I you know, Number one, the government of Guam doesn't have a lot of money, but there are means to get funding to help um, Ka. And, and, and I wish everybody, all the other directors would do the same thing, but that's asking too much, I guess. But for, for Ka, and I like, I like how Mr. Certeza laughs, but I know Mr. Birch is gonna be catching that real soon. But if there's a way to do it, and you have the will to do it, you can get it done. You, you, you've proven it, your background states a lot for that, and kudos to you. Um, I look forward to supporting you on, on, on the floor when your name comes up. And then I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna call you. I'm gonna be calling you soon for the budget. Oh. So I, I would hope that if it's not Joe Certeza, it'll be somebody that deals in money, whoever it is. And then we'll yeah. start talking about uh, the ways for you to get money other than grants. You got QCs out there. There's, um, there's uh, I think there's in the works where public works is supposed to be providing you for whenever anybody's building things. There's ways for you to be funded and we got to get you funded and Khan needs their own building and promote the culture. And then we'll be on our way. All right, take care. Thank you. Yes, and I, I heartily agree um, that, you know, Kaha deserves to have a permanent home. They have so much to offer the community and really having that space where the community can come in and uh, there can be workshops and programming and exhibits and a lot of interactivity happening there um, that needs a space. And so it makes a lot of sense to me that it's a permanent space, something that people readily recognize and they know where to find it. Um, and it just uh, continues to serve our community for a long time period. It becomes uh, an investment in everybody's future that way. So with that, um, I'd also like to just mention that you have background in genealogical research as well. And again, people might not always get the connection but I think there are so many ways that research like that really serves the community on both the art and the humanities level. I know that you made a film. And so again, you, you mentioned that it being the vehicle to get that information to the people. And then what you found out was uh, information on that humanities level of connecting families across the waters. And, and in that particular case, you actually found some of your own family <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when you were uh, in that process. So yeah, it's just an, uh, a wide breadth of information, uh, excuse me, experience that you bring from the fundraising with Senator Joe is so pleased with uh, and all the rest of us, of course. Um, but the knowing how to put structure into place, how to, to get those work plans into place, how to get um, themes going so that there is a real forward movement in what the council is providing and how it's serving the community and that the community learns the many ways that it can be appreciating the arts and humanities and the ways that it benefits all of us and our health and well-being. So, um, just real quickly, I'll just pull out a, a few highlights from some of the testimony. So for Dr. Judy Flores, she also wrote testimony and she said, you are unquestionably qualified that your creativity in planning activities uh, is 
just outstanding and that through your administration, the Guam Humanities Council was well known and respected at the National Endowment for the Humanities level. Then she also mentioned your attention to detail and impeccable uh, execution is characteristic for which you are known in every project that you undertake. So very <laughs> high uh, for very high praise indeed. And then this is from uh, Miss Jackie Balbus, who I mentioned before, has been with the council for, I believe, about 30 years. And so she definitely knows the ins and outs of what she is speaking to. She mentions that you have an impressive resume and that based on your experience and wealth of information, that she fully supports the consideration and nomination of Ms. Leon Guerrero as the director of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities, and she believes that you can bring Kaha and the arts to the forefront of our community and improve the quality of life for the people of Guam. Uh, she goes on for other paragraphs, but for uh, consideration of time, um, it will be part of the permanent record for anybody who wants to read further. And then from Mr. Joseph Kanata, who I mentioned, who is the Chief Program Officer of the Guam Preservation Trust. Um, he does mention that you've been an advocate for historic preservation through your involvement in the organization, in the projects, uh, and other work that you do. Jill, Gillette possesses the knowledge and the skills to manage federal programs, which is no small thing, really, and mm -hmm. has managed very successfully the humanities, uh, uh, humanities Guahan, as it's known today, uh, those years ago. And uh, from Dr. Carlos Madrid, who is the Director of Research at the Micronesian Area Research Center for the University of Guam. He is supporting your nomination. And he mentions that you have been involved in multiple disciplines under the humanities and the arts, and that you're going to bring the perfect balance between the cultural understanding of Guam's multi-ethnic and multicultural realities, along with a deep understanding of the indigenous cultures of Guam, the Mariana Islands, and the uh, Micronesian at, Micronesia at large, excuse me. So, uh, and he ends it with saying that you are always inspiring to the rest of us to continue our own work and push for excellence. And then, um, there's the, I believe the final testimony that I have here to pull excerpts from is from Ms. Karina Fahering. And uh, she starts it off by saying, you are a valiant person in the community who has proven her dedication and promise to our people through culture, research, and philanthropy. And uh, she points out several other things. Um, agreeing with you in that if we do not continue to encourage and promote our heritage, then we are lost as a people. And so it is a great responsibility, but it also comes with great rewards for everybody that we all benefit come from living in a place that understands its history and its arts and its culture and its people um, and has respect for that. She said it was smart for the governor, Lou Leon Guerrero, to ask Ms. Gillette to take the helm of this corporation. And she mentions one of your publications, uh, Seeing Guam Through Our Eyes, which is an excellent model of what humanities can bring to the community. Uh, that was a book where I believe you got um, a multiple perspectives from various parts of the community and shared them. And then she mentions that Gillette's accolade should not go unnoticed. She was the founding member of, uh, a founding member of the Guam Humanities Council Board and later served as the Guam Humanities Council Director, as you mentioned. Um, and that Guampedia breathed itself into existence. Those are my words there, but breathed itself into existence under your leadership, but she notes that as well. So, with that, um, we've already heard from the panel. Um, Senator Joe, was there anything else you wanted to mention before we close out this nomination uh, hearing? 
Okay, so I think he's good. He got his fiscal responsibility comments in, so I think he's good. <laughs> yes. So uh, what we will do is uh, we've completed the last round of questions from the committee and the panel, and that will conclude our confirmation hearing for Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero to serve as the director of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors. I do want to make one final point, and I, I meant to mention it, is that part of what we have in your nomination packet is that the board has um, already gone through the process of approving you or adopting you into their, uh, into their fold, and they have um, certified this by resolution. And so they have sent that resolution over and we have it as part of the nomination. So for you, it's a two-step process. It goes through the board and then it goes to the legislature. And so we know that the board is comprised of really um, substantive and uh, very thoughtful board members. And so we really take it to heart this approval from them and the support from them by resolution. So with that, mm -hmm. uh, I will note that the time is 6.50 and this ends this uh, confirmation hearing for Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero. So Joe Masi for your participation and we understand if, um, if you either choose to stay or if you are going to be moving on, we'll be moving into our next confirmation hearing next. Thank you. Have a good evening. If uh, if you stay or go, either way, I hope it's a good <laughs> evening. <laughs> so uh, next, we have the beginning of the confirmation hearing for Monica Geiger, E. Magahagan Guahan's nominee to fill the youth member position on the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission. We will first hear from Ms. Monica Geiger, and thank you for your patience. Um, I know that you've sat through a, a couple of confirmation hearings already. And then we will receive testimony from the Acting Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, Mr. John Birch. And then um, we can begin to uh, have the panel, which consists of uh, myself and Senator <laughs> Joseph Agustin. Uh, we can provide comments or questions um, as, as needed. So I will call upon the nominee, Ms. Monica Geiger, to go ahead and provide your testimony. Please start with your name and uh, your position. Uh, I might be incorrect. Are, are you still in high school or have you just recently graduated? I'm actually graduating this Saturday, um, June 6th as a high school graduate, yes, class of 2020. Congratulations. So, so I'll let so you much. begin with your, your name and you can announce your uh, upcoming graduation and then move into your testimony. Okay, Papa Day, my name is Monica Geiger. I am currently a class of 2020 graduate at St. Paul Christian School. So um, first off, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for this thrilling opportunity. Um, when I was speaking to my father about this position, I thought it was a perfect way to um, voice my opinion based off the youth generation and just young adults in general. Um, and as an athlete, I've grown up in the parks or the parks and recs, such as the Tumaning gym, growing up as an athlete playing basketball every single day. I realized that it's very important for me to voice out other people's opinions based on the younger generation on what things we can fix off of them, the environmental things. Um, since I've grown up in the gym, I believe there's some things we can work on in the environment for kids, but also families as well. Um, I know that also tourism plays a really, really big role um, based off of Guam. So I believe there's things we, want, we should work on through um, tourism as well. So that way they know that they are in a safe and um, eco-friendly environment. So Duis Masi for that, I can see that um, you have a lot of good vision and um, you know, I think it's so important and I've really appreciated that this time around, um, I, I don't know who all the members have been in the past, but I know that this time around, a lot of our board members or commission members that they are users of the parks, they are users of the facilities. And I think just as I spoke about with uh, artists being part of the 
uh, Council and the Arts and Humanities Council that I think this is going to make some real important differences to have people who understand the needs of the community, um, understand how these facilities or parks are utilized. And then, um, as you mentioned, for you in particular, having some of that youth perspective to make sure that they're represented as well. Yes. So um, what I will do is now move on to the acting director, uh, Mr. John Birch, and let him provide testimony as well. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening to you, and also to Senator St. Augustine, and uh, congratulations, uh, Monica, on your upcoming graduation. Uh, uh, well, thank you for this opportunity to support uh, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's nomination of Ms. Monica Geiger to serve as the youth member on the Department of Parks and Recreations Commission. Uh, with the consent of the legislature, her appointment to the DPR Commission will help us to meet our mission of setting policy and direction for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Serving on the DPR Commission requires responsibility and commitment. Along with uh, the DPR Commission's regular monthly meetings will of course be work sessions, community meetings, and testimonies at public hearings before the Guam legislature and participation in various community functions throughout the year whenever needed. So I look forward to Ms. Geiger's appointment to the DPR Commission and I thank her for agreeing to join us in this hard but rewarding work. Therefore, I humbly request the legislature to move forward quickly in filling this commission position. Uh, thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to testify in support of Ms. Geiger's nomination. Sidhu's uh, uh, um Acting Director Birch, for your testimony. Um, I'll go ahead and see if uh, Senator Joe St. Augustine has any comments or questions that he'd like to ask. Yes. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, can everybody hear me? Am I okay? I, I, I'm both hooked up Zoom uh, also by phone, just in case I freeze up, okay? Uh, Monica, I look forward to supporting your nomination. Um, when, when I looked at your packet, you're just gonna, you'll be graduating. Uh, well, my our, our, our number four grand uh, graduated. So uh, I look forward, I like the youth to get involved in what's going on in the government. We need to get more youth involved because that's how we change things. Most of us like John and I, we're, we're not gonna be around to, you know, we hope to be around a little bit longer, but we want you folks to be the one to take over. You, you got you got to prepare to take over and run with it. Let's let's get let's get the the sports going. Let's get the parks running. Uh, do the surfing that you like to do. Um, get the talent show. Let's get as much youth involved so we can start trending the way it needs to trend. All right, and I, and I look forward to your, supporting your nominations on the floor. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Sisuus Masi for your comments there, uh, Senator. And so what I wanted to do is, um, as Director Bir Acting Director Birch was mentioning, um, you know, there's a lot to the Department of Parks and Recreation. And the main goal is to really serve community needs. And you've very well pointed out that tourists are part of whose needs are being served there. And so I appreciate your foresight in thinking about that because that is an important aspect. We want it to be a safe visit, uh, an enjoyable visit. Uh, and, and I do see them in the parks and at different sites uh, or facilities all the time. And so that is an important consideration. And then there's something that I think you're very well versed for, which is uh, perhaps sports uh, tourism considerations. Um, I know that the slingers would like to have um, a, a, a worldwide slinging competition. It may be virtual this year, but you know we have the national basketball team um, and, and others. So it won't always be in our facilities, but these may be opportunities that someone with your background and some of the other board members' background that they can be thinking about um, how this fits into that bigger picture how to serve our youth um, using our facilities um, in various ways to, to prepare them for these kind of activities, uh, et cetera. But 
part of what I, I wanted to just point out is uh, some of what you will have, oh, have oversight of along with the director and the or the board members. So we do have the territorial park system, which uh, consists of quite a few parks uh, throughout the entire island. And um, maybe one of the, the things that the board will be deciding on when they first get together, which is hopefully soon, we're gonna be meeting up, uh, making up a quorum soon, is um, whether you're interested in touring part of a good portion of these parks and facilities to get an understanding of where we're at. Um, I will say that the acting director has been incredibly active and I'm incredibly grateful that he has been ever since he's gotten in. Um, he's been rehabilitating a lot of the facilities and um, just safeguarding the parks uh, and so forth and then getting the, the budget, so Senator uh, San Agustin should be glad to hear that, getting the budget together, getting the, the structure of personnel needed together, and it, he'll be able to work with the board once you all begin to start meeting about some of those sort of issues. So I think each of you are in very good hands. So in addition to the territorial park system, uh, there are those facilities, which I mentioned, and they get a lot of heavy use. And so uh, keeping them in good working order and maintenance, uh, it's, it's been an issue for a long time. They get a lot of heavy use, uh, and perhaps there's room there for awareness programs or just um, helping people understand how to help take care of those facilities so that they continue to serve everybody. Um, and going back to some of that conversation that I had earlier, um, even the arts can be part of this. They can be helping people understand uh, or understand why they should care about contributing to not <laughs> littering in the parks and, uh, and helping take care of the facilities. Um, the artists could be part of, of what you guys do to convey some of these messages. But um, so part of their responsibilities, of course, are helping keep the island beautiful through the parks, maintaining the parks and the facilities. The Paseo is there as well, the pools um, that, uh, that we've heard about a lot this year um, and are, have gone through challenges uh, for many, many years um, are, are part of what you need to look at. And again, I appreciate the acting director. He has taken that very seriously, has looked long and hard at the pools and their needs to assess them and so forth. But again, this will be something that the board members will also be looking at. Um, you guys work closely with the director and give him some guidance on some of the vision that the board has and that he puts that into action. Um, and it's a, it's a very close relationship that you guys have. And again, part of this as well, just to, to go through some of what you'll be overseeing, is that there are lifeguards and park patrol officers that are part of this whole picture as well. So, and oh, I don't wanna forget because I think maybe not a lot of people really understand that the public cemetery is also under the Department of Parks and Recreation. And so there may be uh, ways that that, uh, that comes into uh, some of the discussion of the board and. And certainly it's some of the work that the director does on a daily basis. Um, so with the board members, the duties, one of the first things that you will be doing is appointing the director. So uh, the board will get together. They will review the work that's been going on and the qualifications of the director and then determining if they are going to um, appoint him. And just discuss a variety of uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation matters. And you will be responsible for creating a report. So not you alone, obviously, but uh, the board all, all together and working with the Department of Parks and Recreation, what they do is each year they develop a report 
to outline the activities that took place over the year, and then their vision for what they will be um, tackling for the next year. So you've spoken a little bit about some of your vision. Um, for Director Birch, uh, Acting Director Birch, is there anything that I left out that you'd like to add in for her to consider as a, a board member? Oh yes, uh, you left out that we also have historic preservation, which plays a big part in <gasps> preserving our culture and our history. So, yes, yes, thank you for that reminder. Um, what we did this year, and I'm not sure that they've done it in the past, but we, uh, we put the historic preservation entities together. So that actually isn't under my oversight and, and uh, I did forget it. So thank you for reminding me. It's a very important part of what the Department of Parks and Recreation does. In fact, yes. my background is in historic preservation. Uh, well, so you would think that I, I would have uh, remembered that off the bat, but, but it, and it's true. Um, they have responsibility over uh, over 166 historic sites throughout the island. They have responsibility for nominating new sites, uh, the maintenance of them, the safeguarding of them, many other things like that. Now they do have a historic preservation review board that does the, uh, the, the, the working closely with that historic resources division, but that all comes under the Department of Recreation, which means that you have that, that higher level of oversight there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not much else, Senator, you covered quite a bit. Okay. And she Yes. I planned that, and I, I recently just got all the contact numbers and contact uh, email addresses. So I'll be sending out very soon uh, a proposal for them to have their first meeting and select their officers because we don't have any officers at that. And then of course, to decide on the governor's nominee. And um, hopefully by then, I'm hoping that uh, Ms. Uh, Geiger's, uh, you know, is does receive confirmation so she could be a part of that. But even if not, I will still send them. So even though they won't have voting, uh, their votes won't count, uh, they will still participate. Uh, and uh, I plan to get that going. So hopefully they'll have the first meeting this month. And Great. we'll start moving forward. Great, that's very good to hear. And uh, Ms. Geiger and I had talked about that a little bit that um, we will get your confirmation packet to, to all, uh, well, through all the processes as quickly as possible, but even if uh, you are not confirmed until next month, as it works its way through the processes, we certainly want you to be a part of the board meeting so that you're well versed, you're meeting everybody, and you're part of the activity from the get go. So uh, let's see. Was there anything else that anybody wanted to provide as a, a comment? I think we're probably pretty good. So we've uh, completed our questions and our comments from the committee, the panel, and uh, everybody else who was here on the confirmation hearing for Ms. Monica Geiger to serve as the youth member to the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission Board of Directors. Um, so uh, what I will do is um, I will read our, our adjournment um, and I will announce the, the time of this end. So uh, we are ending that confirmation hearing of Imagahag and Guahan's nominee, Ms. Monica Geiger, for the position of the director of, excuse me, um, for the commission, uh, excuse me, uh, for being a commission member of the Department of Parks and Recreation. The time is now 7.10 and I just will go through some closing adjournment uh, business. So a public reminder, the committee will continue to receive written testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, and Self-Determination and Regional Affairs and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located at the second floor 
of the Guam Congress building. And that applies to any of the three uh, confirmation hearings that we heard today for Mr. Joseph D. Certeza, for Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, or for Ms. Monica Geiger. So do us maasi for your attendance and participation in today's virtual confirmation public hearing. Today's hearing is now adjourned. Uh, so do us maasi for your attendance and participation in the virtual confirmation hearing. Have a good evening. <laughs> and thank you all for your patience uh, in waiting to be the third in that round. <laughs>